Hello and welcome to the shop. I literally just finished unboxing this Turncrafter Commander Lathe sent to me by Sean Shiree. Sean, thank you so much. I promise you this lathe is going to get used and hopefully used so much that I wear it out. <laughs> I am excited. Now my initial plan was after setting it up, go in the house, print out the instruction manual and read up and learn about the features of the lathe. Instead, I stood back behind it for a few minutes, flipping switches, turning dials, and uh, I feel pretty comfortable. It reminds me a lot of a, the jet lathe that my club has in regard to how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn something. And I've been promising you guys, since you saw these on my Instagram a couple of, couple of weeks ago, that I'm gonna turn a bottle stopper. A buddy of mine at work wants a bottle stopper, and these are the woods he picked out. I've got a piece of tulip, which will be the base of the bottle stopper. He then wants me to put a little bit of purple heart on top of it, so we'll cut off a little bit of this for the top half of the bottle stopper. And I've got a piece of this ash crotch that was sent to me by Jim Zimmerman, so I'm gonna cut a chunk of that off and turn a cabochon for the end of the purple heart. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start off by heading over to the drill press, and I need to get this drilled and tapped. And I'll show you the tools I use and tell you all about those in just a minute. I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about the equipment that I'll be using today to turn a bottle stopper. This is the bottle stopper mandrel. It threads onto your headstock. The headstock in my lathe is one inch by eight TPI. So when you buy this, you'll need to know uh, the threading of your headstock, what, that, what those numbers are, so that you can buy the right one. The end of it here is what the bottle stopper blank will thread onto so that we can turn it. The part number for that is PK BS1 MJ, and that is the one inch by eight TPI. So watch out when you order and make sure you get the one that is for your lathe. In order to do this, and they sell all this stuff right together on the same page, this is a, let me read it, a five sixteenths inch high speed drill bit. A little hard to see those numbers. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. And they sell this right, I mean, on the same page they sell this, this is all kind of a kit almost. But you'll need a 5 16 inch drill bit, that's what we're gonna be drilling the hole in our blank with. And once you've got the 5 16 inch drill bit, you need a tap. And our tap is 3 8 by 16. And I bought this little tap handle, and I do have the part number for the tap handle. It is B-S-T-A-P-S-E-T. -S -E and basically we'll just Put the, put the tap into the tap handle, tighten her down, make sure she's tight. Now I'm gonna go drill a hole in my blank. We'll come back, we'll tap it with this, and then we'll be ready to put it on the mandrel and turn it on the lathe. I'm getting prepared to drill, and I wanna show you what I've done here. I took a piece of tape and put it on my drill bit, and I aligned the tap with it so that I could make sure the bottom of the tap was gonna be just inside of the blank when I got done tapping. When I first started making bottle stoppers, I didn't drill my hole deep enough. My tap would bottom out and then it would just tear the threads. So you wanna make sure you leave the hole deep enough to, for the tap to go completely into the blank. My pin vise jaws won't open wide enough to hold this blank, so I'm just gonna use this clamp to hold it in place. And you can see I'd already started on this blank. I was gonna make this one up a while back and I ended up cutting the blank off and only using half of it. So I had already drawn an X, a line from corner to corner to form an X. And I had just touched it with the bit to start drilling. So I'm just gonna realign with that hole. And then we're just gonna drill right down into this blank. As soon as the tape touches and cleans off the dust off the blank, you know you've gone deep enough. The next step in the process is to tap the blank. And when you're tapping wood, you just want to take your time and cut slowly. The other thing you gotta be careful of is you wanna make sure you're going straight into the blank. I've gone in at a bit of an angle before and it just basically tears the threads up. And you'll notice periodically I'm backing up and that is just to clear the chips, just like you would if you were drilling a hole. You need to get those chips out of there so that the tap can properly do its job.
This is a slow process, but taking your time is worth it because if you get into a hurry, trust me, I can't tell you how I know this, but you will end up stripping your stripping your threads out. <laughs> I've had a few failures. The tap usually just goes right in. It's doing a nice job. You can feel it cutting. And uh, it's doing a really nice job of threading this block of wood. I'm going to go right on down to the end until the tap stops. All right, she just stopped. Now I'm going to pull the tap out nice and slow. Once again, don't get in a hurry. This tulip is nice and dense wood, so it takes the threads very well. If you have a wood that is a little softer and doesn't seem to want to take the threads real well, what you can do is you can go ahead and tap it. And after you've tapped it, just run a little thin CA glue down there and just rotate your blank like this. Let the threads get full of that CA. Let it set and dry really well. And then come back and just run your tap down in there one more time just to sort of clean it up a little bit. And you'll get a super nice, super nice fit. And uh, the CA glue will hold all those fibers together. And you won't have any issue with the, uh, the mandrel threading into the blank. Let me grab the mandrel and we'll get this threaded up. We should be able to just take our mandrel, thread it right into the end of the blank. And you can see, we've got a nice tight fit all the way around the mandrel. It's not in at an angle, so we did a good job drilling and a good job tapping. Now we're ready to take this to the lathe and chuck it up. I'm over at the lathe, and the way this bottle stopper mandrel works is you just thread it right onto your headstock. I'm going to be turning right around 3,000 RPMs. I'm just going to start off with a three-quarter inch roughing gouge and get this, this blank down to round. The neat thing about bottle stoppers is there really are no rules. Uh, nobody says you have to cut it a certain way or you know do anything particular to it. You can just use your imagination. One thing I would recommend is the first couple of bottle stoppers I ever made, they were really, really long. And that just doesn't seem to be very aesthetically pleasing. I find that it's better to make them a little more squat. Uh, I'm gonna go with somewhere about two and a quarter to two and a half inches, which will take me out to about here. This blank looks pretty good. I'll add a little cap of Purple Heart at the top. So what I'm gonna do now is get my tailstock out of the way and turn my attention to flattening the space or the face of this blank. The tool I'm gonna to use for flattening the face is a square carbide cutter. I kinda of like this because I can run it right down the face of the blank and if I just go straight in, I can get a perfectly flat surface. first couple of passes with the tool were just to get the excess material out of the way and the final couple of passes I just focused on bringing the tool in nice and slow and keeping it square against the face of the blank to give myself a nice glue surface. For my purple heart blank I ran it through the table saw to ensure that I had a nice flat end. And What I need to do now is attach the two together. I'm going to go ahead for the sake of the video to keep things quick I'm gonna use a medium CA glue with an activator. My recommendation to you would be to use either a five minute epoxy or a good wood glue like maybe Tight Bond. I'm gonna douse the end of the Purple Heart blank with medium CA glue, making sure I get good coverage. We'll take our activator, spray the end of the tulip blank We'll bring them together, and I'm gonna bring up my tailstock. This should lock everything down. And then I'm gonna give it just a little bit more of activator. We're gonna let this sit for a couple of minutes, and then we'll come back and trim off part of the Purple Heart and finish turning our bottle stopper. I ran into the house for a few minutes, and this blank has been setting maybe for about 10 minutes. What I want to do now is decide how much of the Purple Heart I want to keep and go ahead and remove the unneeded portion. I initially said somewhere between two and a quarter and two and a half. So if I come up to two and a half inches, I'm right here. And let's just get a rough mark on this blank. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer it around, even though it's not going to be perfect on two sides like that, as the blank spins, you will see that line, and I'll be able to use my parting tool and cut just to the right of the line. I've got an eighth inch parting tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and part this off. Now, if you have a, a, a wider parting tool, say quarter inch parting tool, it's not gonna matter. Um, you just wanna part to the right of your line. When I brought my tailstock up earlier to hold things in place for the glue to cure, I went ahead and tightened it down, so I got a secure fit. So we're ready now, we're gonna bring the uh, tool rest in, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this blank parted off. I haven't separated the blank yet, I got part of the way down into it and I thought, you know, this is kind of silly. Why am I fighting this with a parting tool? I'm gonna to run over to my table saw and just run this through the saw, cut it off, we'll come back and then we'll begin to shape our bottle stopper. Now that I've got the excess material removed from the blank, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my tailstock up and go back to my three quarter inch roughing gouge and we're just gonna true this piece of purple heart up to the same diameter as the tulip. With the Purple Heart trued up, I now want to start working on the basic shape of my bottle stopper. And what I'm going to do is from about here down, I want to taper it to the jig. Uh, the bottom of this jig is the same exact size as the bottle stopper mechanism that will screw into the blank when we're finished. So by tapering it down that way, it's going to make a nice transition between the, chrome, the chromed bottle stopper and the uh, blank. I've got the basic shape that I want for the bottom of my bottle stopper. Now what I'm gonna do is up here on this purple heart, we're gonna leave a section about, oh, let's say 3 8 of an inch wide. And we're gonna leave that flat. Then I'm gonna angle back in the opposite direction of this. Uh, we'll have a flat area on the front, which we will face off, and then we'll insert a cabochon in the end of this bottle stopper. I've got the basic shape that I was looking for. One thing I, I want to do is there's too much meat up at the top. So I'm gonna take about a third of this and just shave it off nice and flat. Uh, at that point, I'll be ready to start working on uh, cutting the, the uh, indention for the cabochon. I've temporarily removed my bottle stopper from the lathe. You can see the end that I flattened. That'll show you about how much I took off of it. And really, like I said earlier in the video, uh, there is no rhyme, reason, or rule behind a bottle stopper. It's pretty much uh, totally a creative process. So whatever you want to do with it, uh, you do. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I've removed it and replaced it with my chuck. And I've got a sacrificial piece. This is pine, which is really soft. So what I've done is I flattened the face of the pine. And it's really kind of hard to see right now because I've, I've wore it down. But I put a three-quarter inch piece of cherry. I hot glued it onto the pine. And I continually hot glue pieces of wood onto the cherry so that I can turn them around. This is how I make my cabochons. And as I part them off, of course, the cherry gets thinner and thinner. I'm going to have to replace it pretty soon. The cherry is nice and flat. This is a piece of ash crotch, and what I did is I took it uh, and I laid a piece of sandpaper on the steel base of my saw, and I just rubbed it uh, until I got a nice smooth surface and I could see no tool marks where it had been cut. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to take a pencil, draw a couple of circle rings on here while the lathe is spinning. And what these circle rings do is they sort of make like a, a bullseye. So I can lay this piece of wood on here and kind of find the circle that it fits in. 
uh, I, I made about five or six circles and I find the one it fits the best in and that lets me know where to glue it so that I can ensure that it is it's centered as best as it can be because you know if it's off center you're going to lose a whole lot of wood so the better you center it uh, the nicer or the less wood you're going to lose as you true this up. And I'm just going to use hot glue I'm going to put a generous amount on the blank or on the uh, block of wood and I know which circle it was centered in so I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to apply a decent amount of pressure for a couple of seconds hot glue cures relatively quickly then I'm going to come back and I always like to come right along the crease here and go ahead and hot glue uh, the crease of the wood or the the gap between the two blocks of wood this just gives it a little added extra protection um, I'll be honest I've never had a piece come off as long as you let the glue cure However, I'm not using large blocks of wood. I only use small pieces of wood for this. Uh, I would be hesitant to do a really large block of wood, um, but a small piece, if it comes off, as long as you've got your face shield on, uh, you shouldn't be in too bad a shape. So we're gonna shut the camera off, give this a couple of minutes, let everything set up, and we'll come back and true it up. I've given the hot glue about five minutes and it's solid all the way around. It's not tacky anymore. So let's go ahead and true this block of wood up. Uh, by the way, this is a piece of ash crotch. I've been using this quite a bit for cabochons. It's really beautiful. Uh, it almost looks like cork, which gives a real nice effect to the end of, uh, of, a, of a bottle stopper. I've been running the lathe at close to 3,000 RPMs for turning the bottle stopper. I ran somewhere between 2,200 and 2,300 for turning this cabochon or truing this cabochon up. Main reason why is I just had a lot of extra, extra weight with the uh, chuck on here and it's just a personal preference. Uh, you'll notice the last thing I did once I got this trued up is I flattened the face. This will be the face that gets glued into the bottle stopper. What we're going to do now is we're going to come back and decide how far back we want to go and we're going to part a piece of this off and i probably about where my finger is is about what i'll part off so let's go ahead and get this little this little block of wood removed from this larger chunk i'm going to try this from a little bit different angle in hopes that you'll better be able to see what i'm doing uh, but essentially i'm going to take a quarter inch parting tool and I'm just going to go in and cut a little pocket in the end of this uh, bottle stopper that will fit this cabochon that we just cut off. This is a trial and error thing. It's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to get close really fast, and then I'm going to come back and just take a hair off. We'll stop, test, take another little tiny bit off, stop, test, until we get a really tight fit. The idea is to get a, a nice snug fit without any slop, because if you have slop, that means you're going to see um, the gap or a line around the outside of the cabochon where it didn't fit well into the blank. And this cabochon is probably three-eighths of an inch thick or so. Um, so we're going to try to get about half of it depth-wise into the end of the bottle stopper. I'm actually pretty close there. Uh, it's, it's still, the hole is still too small. So I'm just gonna take very light cuts uh, and when I'm done, I'll deepen the bottom of this uh, hole so that I make sure I got a good tight fit. It's nothing more than take a little bit off, test. Just be super careful and sneak up on it. Okay, we've got it, and you'll notice it's not moving back and forth or up and down. Whoops, and I just dropped it. I've got a good tight fit. So what I'm doing now is go in and just deepen this cavity a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cover the back of the cabochon in CA. 
using a little bit of medium CA. Then we're gonna take and get some activator in the hole. And there we go. Snap it back in there. Oh, nice and even. Went all the way back in, got a good fit. Hope I didn't get any CA on my hand. I'll give it a little bit of shot on the outside here in case any of it came up around the edges. I got a really good tight fit. I like that. I'm gonna let this set for a few minutes, make sure the CA cures really well, then we'll come back and do our finished shaping. My next step is I'm gonna bring a parting tool in and clean that little nub off of the end of the cabochon. And what that is, that's where we parted it off of the original blank. Then I'm gonna come in with this little detail gouge and I'm gonna just clean up the end of the blank. I'm very happy with the shape of the bottle stopper. This is what he and I initially talked about. And you can see there's the cabochon in the end. And notice I've got a wonderfully nice transition there. You don't see any lines, no glue marks. We are ready to sand this. For sanding my bottle stopper, I've got this little hook and loop sponge adapter that I'll use on my cordless drill. I got this from Wood Turner's Wonders and I'm really liking it. You use it with these sanding discs and they just Velcro right onto the pad and you're ready to start sanding. Now the grit that I'm using will be 60, 80, 120, 180, 240, 320, 400, and 600 and we'll run through each of these grits. Now I won't make you watch more than maybe the first and the last one, uh, but I think you'll get the idea rather quickly how they work. Take a look at that. The sanding system does an amazing job. Now you're gonna see some white in the purple heart. What that is is dust in the grain. When I use denatured alcohol, that'll come out. You won't see that in the finished product. You can see a little bit down there. It's just, it's just in the, down in the grain. Now my buddy wants this to be finished with a super high gloss finish. So I'm gonna use CA. Normally on something like this, I like a warmer finish, something like maybe a shallow wax with a triple E, uh, but we're gonna do the CA because that's what he wants. If you do CA on a bottle stopper, here's a little tip. Back it off of the mandrel a turn or so. See how I've got the little gap there? And what that's for is as I'm applying the CA, this is gonna be turning really slow on the lathe. See, so you can see it's not gonna tighten back up. But as I come down to the bottom here and I move across to the, uh, to the uh, chuck, I'm not going to glue the bottle stopper to the chuck. If you don't back that off or if you don't put some wax on here, what's gonna happen is you'll glue it to the chuck and when you break it loose, It'll be harder to break loose, number one. Number two, you stand a chance at cracking the ends of your blank. So I always back it off a little bit uh, right before I apply my CA finish. Let me go ahead and wipe it down with DNA and we'll see what it looks like. Always start off wiping with the grain. That helps to remove any of that dust from the grain. Now we'll start it up a little bit here and let it run. This will kind of give you a preview of what it's going to look like. And it dries relatively quickly, but now when it dries, I won't be dealing. You'll still see a little bit of white. That, that's in the grain. That's all going to disappear. This is going to be absolutely gorgeous when the CA goes on. We're going to let it sit for just a couple of minutes. And uh, don't touch it with your hands once you've applied the DNA. You don't want any oils from your hands, which could cause the CA to debond. I'm using the dry end of the rag to knock some fuzzies off right there. I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to let it uh, fully dry. Then we're going to come back and put a CA finish on this. I'm going to treat this just like I would a pen. 
We're going to put her on low speed and we're just going to drop a little bit of CA on there. Make sure we get good coverage and we'll let her dry. This thin CA is going to dry really fast. See how any, any white spots are gone from the uh, Purple Heart? It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I am going to take my time. I'm going to apply probably three, four coats of the thin, and then I'll come back and put a couple of coats of medium, maybe three coats of medium on here, and it should be ready for micro mesh and sanding. I won't make you watch the uh, application of the CA, but I'll come back and show it to you right before I micro mesh. I just finished applying the CA glue. The blank looks really nice and it's ready for micro mesh. This will really uh, make this blank shine. I went ahead and buffed up the blank for the bottle stopper and I kind of got excited after I did it and went ahead and assembled it before I showed you what it looked like. And for that I apologize, but I'll show you what happens. Here is the bottle stopper. It looks amazing. I, I didn't know how the Purple Heart would look with the tulip, but the tulip has just enough purple in it. It actually goes really well. And there's the cabochon on the end. I'm getting a lot of reflection there. It's got a nice purple effect to it. Really beautiful. And all you do is the, the uh, mandrel that the bottle stopper is on, you thread the bottle stopper off, and here's an example of a bottle stopper. And it's got a threaded section on the end. You just basically thread this into the bottle stopper, tighten it down, and you're ready to go. That's all there is to it. Isn't that beautiful? Listen, I'd really like to thank you guys for joining me in the shop for this project. This was awesome for me because uh, I, I was able to turn for the first time on my new lathe that Sean Shirey sent me. Uh, the turn crafter, it is so quiet, you don't know it's running. I walked off one time and I turned around and walked back and I had left the lathe on because I didn't I didn't hear it running. It's no, It was nowhere near as noisy as my old Harbor Freight. So for that, I'm really thankful. Um, it was so smooth, I loved it. I apologize for the ladder being in the way. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, let me take you over and show you what I use that ladder for. I'm behind the lathe and you can see I have a couple of clamps and I just use a tripod and I extend that tripod out over my lathe and that's how I get the overlay the shots for you guys. So whenever you watch one of my videos and you see that ladder in the background, now you know what it's there for. I would really like to thank you guys for joining me in the shop today. I want to throw out one more thank you to Sean. Sean, I truly appreciate this lathe. It's fantastic. I am so excited about it. And I've got so many projects and so many ideas, which is, is just for me is invigorating. But this one turned out amazing. I can't wait to deliver it uh, to my buddy. I want you guys to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening.